This uh, program actually began here in uh, Columbia University. Uh, Earth Institute received funding from the MacArthur Foundation uh, back in 2007, and they uh, launched an international commission on uh, education for sustainable development to practice, and actually, uh, it's very important to add that word practice, to identify gaps in the training of development uh, practitioners and, and recommend improvements for uh, professionals that work in the development space. And the result of this commission was the creation of this master uh, development practice program. It began with some seed funding from the MacArthur Foundation, uh, something like 11 programs initially were funded and uh, around the world. Uh, the program was launched 10 years ago, like I said, in, uh, in New Delhi. And since then, it has grown uh, between 36 and 38 uh, programs. Uh, we're here with uh, Lucia Rodriguez, who's the director of the Secretariat of the MDP program uh, here in uh, Columbia University. So I have to be quite honest with what I'm presenting here today, also about this program. <laughs> uh, you know, you get a sense of, in that map, where the programs are located. Uh, you can see, like, in North America, we uh, have more programs than in most other regions of the world. Uh, here at Columbia, um, also Harvard, and Thomas will uh, present uh, after me. Uh, Lehigh is in the process of joining the program. Emory and the University of Florida, where I'm located, uh, University of Minnesota, Reddish University in Denver, Colorado, the University of Arizona, and Berkeley. And I, I don't know if George Scharfenberger is uh, patched in, if he is. Hello, George. So another uh, thing that came out of this uh, commission was the recommendation of establishing uh, a program with a, a strong inter interdisciplinary focus, recognizing that a development practitioner really needs a strong holistic interdisciplinary understanding of. And that was one of the things that they found that was a gap in uh, academic programs and development. So it was structured around these four pillars, uh, social sciences, natural sciences, health sciences, and management. And in each of the universities, they had core courses um, inside each of those pillars. Also, these pillars, they recognize there's a lot of interconnections and, uh, and um, interactions among um, these different pillars. The one thing that all the universities in the uh, MDP Global Consortium have in common is they have, of course, a very strong interest in development and also in sustainability. But the emphasis of the individual programs varies considerably. As you could imagine, you saw the, the map uh, in the previous slide. In some areas, uh, the, like the University of Botswana, for example, would have very different capacities than Columbia University or Harvard. So the way the program is actually implemented in different universities around the world actually has to be uh, quite distinct. Uh, I should also mention here that one thing that has been common across all of the programs is uh, what we what we call the global classroom. Uh, initially, it was uh, run out of here out of Columbia University. Um, in the last number of years, using uh, Jeff's book on the age of sustainable development, but it's a it's a foundational course because as you'll see a little later on, the students that come into the MDP <laughs> program have very diverse um, disciplinary backgrounds. So it's important to have a foundational course um, that's basically structured around, in this case, the SDGs so that everybody has kind of a common foundation for understanding sustainable development. Another thing that we realized early on in uh, implementing this program was the importance of um, having a balance among these interrelated student learning outcomes related to the knowledge, uh, skills, and professional behavior. Of course, you can have very knowledgeable people, but if they lack the skills, they're not going to be very effective development practitioners. You could have very, people that are very knowledgeable and skillful, but if they have inappropriate professional behavior in intercultural tech context, they're not going to be very effective development practitioners either. So it's, it's, a, it's very important that students understand the distinction between knowledge and skills. Knowledge you can acquire rather quickly uh, through reading and study and so forth, but skills really require practice to, to uh, hone and to, to master. So you have to create, within these programs, uh, a lot of opportunities for, for practice. And you can see that it's everything from communication, writing, oral communication, to using participatory methods, uh, having analytical skills, and so forth, uh, is what um, 
we cover in the program. <coughs> Another important piece of the, of the MVP program is what we call the field practicum, and this is uh, generally between the first and second year of the master's program, which is like a 10 to 12 week period where students go off to different parts of the world. It, it could be right here in the United States. There's no problem with that. But in our case, uh, in the University of Florida, almost all of our students have gone to Latin America, Africa, and also in some cases in Asia. Uh, what it, the field practicum, um, it, the students have to contact a host organization, and they have to define with the host organization a topic of mutual interest and, and define deliverables that the student needs to uh, uh, deliver at the end of the field practicum. And the types of host organizations are very broadly, everything from NGOs to public sector entities, uh, international organizations, private sector educational organizations, community-based, et cetera. And this is just uh, five minutes left is all I have. Okay. <laughs> and there, you, this is just from the University of Florida, which is not one of the larger programs in the, in the network uh, where our field practicums have been carried out. But I'll just move along. So I want to get into some of these important lessons. First of all, like the SDEG agenda, as I already mentioned, the, uh, the interests of students are quite broad. And this implies the importance of having personalized learning. Uh, because you want to be able to provide you know, different options for students that have different disciplinary interests. So this implies the need for strong cross-departmental uh, collaboration which in conversations I've had with some of you, I know this is a challenge because of institutional and financial arrangements within the universities. And it's important to have that collaboration because you want to offer a range of alternative uh, elective courses for the students. And also, in, in, in our model, uh, the faculty members serve on uh, student committees. Another important lesson is that uh, from alumni and also from the employers of our alumni that it is very important what we heard earlier this morning that students have this very broad cross-disciplinary and cross-sector uh, analysis, uh, understanding of sustainable development challenges. And uh, for this reason, although they have specific disciplinary interests, they also appreciate the cohort model in which they get to work with uh, students with other disciplinary interests because in this way they're exposed to uh, an array of different uh, disciplinary uh, and I reached out to the directors of the MVP programs when uh, uh, I was invited to give this talk. I said, what one thing would you recommend for this audience? And they said to stress the importance of integration inherent in sustainable development. And there's different types of integration across sectors, disciplines, and stakeholders. Uh, linkages, uh, we've already heard a few people mention synergies and trade-offs implicit in the SDG agenda. And then also looking across time because you have long, short-term, and medium-term uh, perspectives and needs related to sustainable development. Another important lesson is this importance of being able to reconcile this broad understanding and complex nature of sustainable development, which can be quite daunting and overwhelming, actually, for students once they begin to grasp what they're getting involved in, with a rather narrow space that one actually works in. So it's important that students understand that even if they're working on developing a curriculum or doing some sort of developing a monitoring and evaluation plan for sustainable development initiatives, that's fine. That's an important contribution. You're not going to solve everything in sustainable development in a two-year program. So I have two more minutes. Okay. <laughs> Another thing that we have found is that in the MDP program, we have students coming in with very diverse perspectives of uh, sustainable sustainability. And you see different examples there, everything from degrowth to corporate-driven development and so forth. For a program like the MDP, or if you want to have a program of sustainable development, it's important to place the program right in the center of those. You have to open up spaces to accommodate and critically discuss these different views on sustainability in a program like the MDP. The, uh, the field practicum, which I mentioned before, really is the capstone uh, experience. It forces the students to, to gain a lot of knowledge about context and uh, about the conceptual underpinnings of their work. 
It provides them with an opportunity to actually practice, to gain skills, um, like, we, like participatory methods and so forth, in a real world uh, context. And also is, gives them a, a wonderful opportunity to actually put their professional uh, behavior to test in complex uh, context, you know, often intercultural context. So I think I'll just pass over that. And finally, uh, uh, another important lesson, and this, I think it, you all would agree with this, that the students that come into a program like the MDP are often very passionate, driven individuals, and they're anxious to get involved in something. So it's advisable early on to identify opportunities for them within the local community to get involved. And there's just a list of uh, what our students have done uh, within Gainesville. Uh, some of these have been driven by the students themselves, developing these different types of working groups and so forth. I won't, I won't read through that list. With regard to the feedback from, uh, from our students from this recent alumni survey, you can see the type of knowledge areas that they have indicated are important to their employers and they think are trending over time into the future. And the things that we have talked about this morning uh, have the ability for abstract, cross-disciplinary, and cross-sectoral thought. Something that we didn't have in the original uh, uh, report to the, the commission uh, that was financed by the uh, MacArthur Foundation is this idea of systems thinking, but it bubbled up quite high in this study with the, uh, with the MDP alumni. And the other topics there are also quite important, and of course they're all included uh, in the SDG agenda. The last, and the last is really uh, talking about entrepreneurship. That's the role of the corporate sector, but also the corporate sector or you know, the private sector that's quite small, entrepreneurs. With regard to skills, the one that was most mentioned was this uh, development of uh, analytical skills, because there's a lot of interest in, in uh, supporting or contributing to monitoring and evaluation efforts of uh, sustainable development initiatives. Uh, we've talked about the importance of data this morning. And then these other skills of cultural sensitivity and communication, critical thinking, project management, and networking. And I just want to show one more slide here. We complemented the, uh, the study with alumni with uh, a couple results of meta-analysis, comparative analysis on the same topics. And you'll see the list of things that 28 NGO managers with more than 10 years experience indicated as important for their employees or development practitioners and also for 2,500 development professionals, uh, a DevEx study that was carried out. And you can see that there's a lot of uh, agreement among these different studies about the types of knowledge, skills, and professional behavior that are important for development practitioners. So if you are getting involved in a program of sustainable development, I think this, this type of information is very important to think about the, you know, creating opportunities for practice, uh, also emphasizing the importance of professional behavior, and also, um, of course, creating a hunger for knowledge. So I think I have to leave it there. I had a couple more quick slides, but I'll leave it there and I'll turn it over to uh, Thomas. Good afternoon, everyone. So, a um, couple of big takeaways on, on what I'm about to present. And uh, first of all, it's a, a discussion on a journey to create an MDP program in the last couple of years at Harvard University, that small New England college up in the Boston area. And so, I'm the director of the program, the Master's in Development Practice program, as well as the sustainability program there. And so, uh, of course, as, um, as Glenn mentioned, that the, the uh, Global Association represents several different partners. Um, they engage at several different levels, not only in terms of the direct curriculum development, but also at, at levels of the associate level as well. So there's a variety of different factors and, and that you can engage with, or levels you can engage with. And us being the more recent one, we're up to, as my understanding is, 38 at this point. Um, so it's a, a growing uh, organization. And what's most important about this, it led us to um, a, a point of, um, of direction. So we knew where we were headed because of the work that the Global Association has been doing over the last 10 years. And I put that out as a model of what this chapter could do at the national level. We could think of other models like MDP that would help us, whether that be more technical, whether they might be related to policy or law or whatever discipline it may be, we think about how we can develop these models to accelerate uh, the development of programs. 
And so the extension school, now the extension school is going to be a little bit out of the box for many of you in terms of model, but I know that many of the universities do have extension schools. And I kind of like to say that it's, it's extension school has really become the nexus school. And why that's so important. So the extension school is 110 years old, and it's part of the Harvard University that had this tradition of the, the Harvard Yard bars on, uh, opened up and allowing us to have education that was accessible to the community, locally, affordably, and also lifelong learning. So those three major things are the tradition of the extension school, which to me resonates a lot with where we're headed in the sustainable development area. And so we offer a master's in development practice is part of our program. Now, how do I do that from a curriculum standpoint? Well, we're Harvard University, and we have the structure, some of what Glenn had said, in terms of boundaries of paying your instructors, boundaries of how do you get each one of the courses that are accessible to your students in an open enrollment environment. And so we draw from the Graduate School of Design, the Harvard Medical School, the Divinity School, the School of Public Health, and the porosity of that structure allows me to create this multidisciplinary environment. And I, and I know that that's something that is an incredible luxury to have. Also, it comes with administrative um, burdens too. I have, in my program, 150 faculty. And each year, I have to up their contracts. We have over um, 980 faculty members as part of the Extension School. And so we administer one-year contracts with each and every individual every single year. And so with that, we can also have our Harvard University ladder and tenure faculty, but also those who are outside our university as well, and even um, practitioners who are developing innovative areas of, of interest by our students. So what does our student body look like? Well, in this case, in the development area, we're seeing folks retooling. So our average age is about 37. And they're coming from areas around the world um, and many of them uh, are outside of uh, the United States. 80% of my students are outside of Massachusetts. We are a distance learning organization. So that's the other piece of what we're doing to break the model. As a distance learning organization, we have a, a, a larger reach for those interested in sustainability. Now, the other thing that's uh, a, a real issue with uh, many of those pr pursuing a degree is how do they quit their job and afford education? And so part-time education is another area that we break the model as well. Uh, folks are not able to leave work and quit their jobs, you know, take care of family, et cetera. They need to do this part-time. And so we're flexible in that as aspect as well. So flexibility is a big piece of the success of what we're doing at this point and encourage uh, you as well. Um, because it, in many cases, our students are only taking one course a semester. It takes them anywhere between three to five years uh, to get their degree. Uh, many of them are retooling, some of them are career changing, and that leads to a huge, if you will, diversity, diversity of the types of students that we have. We have students that go on to work for Greenpeace, and we have students that go on to work for Goldman Sachs. It is an enormous diversity in terms of what we're serving and, and what they're going on uh, moving forward. So with that very diverse uh, student body. Um, flexibility, as I mentioned, is a, is, a, is a main factor here. And so breaking the model, and many of you um, probably have distance learning uh, initiatives going on at your universities. We're going, uh, we're just doubling down on this. We have about 17,000 students right now who are part of our extension school. And we look at three different modalities. Those being on campus, those that are taking courses online and asynchronously, so they take them at the time that they need to uh, participate in classroom environments. And then also we have hybrid courses, courses that are held at, at the Harvard University campus and around the world as well. So we just continue to break this model of where is the campus, where is the access to students, uh, and both vice versa, access to faculty.